Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to create a polar region with icebergs and ice chunks in the water. You can control the shape of our icebergs just by changing one parameter. Of course you can change the ratio between icebergs and water, also changing just one parameter. You can change the height of our icebergs. And of course the density of our ice chunks in the water and much much more um, so if you want to know how to create that just watch that video we will start with creating our icebergs and therefore we will go into our geometry nodes panel uh, click on new and we disconnect the input from the output and first of all, we are going to create a grid. The grid will be the base of our icebergs and we will distort it with some noise distortion. And we make the grid maybe 200, about 200 meters. And the resolution is about 500 to 500. The better the resolution, the more details you will get later on. And to get an even better control, we will add a subdivision surface. We will leave that at zero at the moment because um, it can crash your computer if it goes more than uh, one, two or three. Three maybe, um, it depends on the size of your mesh and the, the re resolution. So, but at the moment we will leave it at zero we can turn it up later on and we will need a Z position node and we will need a Z shade smooth node because we want some shade, some smooth shaded icebergs. Connect the mesh with the geometry and geometry with geometry and of course we want some material that material we will fill the material later and now connect everything with the group output and there we have the base for our icebergs by the way um i've um i've been asked how i get the um the modifier panel uh, stacked with all my the, the geometry nodes um, information and um to do that you just connect one of your nodes with one of these empty group input uh, nodes and as you can see uh, in the, on the right modifier panel there appears the, the input that you have connected and now you can change it change it like you want that's only for the beginners because i've been asked that but back to our icebergs now we want to give the icebergs some noise distortion and therefore we will add some noise but first of all we are going to group that hit ctrl j to make a group and we will name that iceberg grid now we are going to create the noise of our icebergs the most important part um, I just experimented with some uh, noise textures. There is not uh, that specific way uh, and I did not know exactly what I had to do. Uh, I also had to uh, experiment some ways. So maybe you just uh, copy my parameters and my notes. I've used some noise texture to create the, the, the random base of my icebergs and after that noise texture, I plugged in a Voroni texture. So the Voroni texture only appears in the uh, black or the white parts. No, I think in the black parts of the noise texture. And it gives uh, it the typical iceberg shapes. We can see that later on. Um, we will also need a color ramp. We need a float curve node. I think we also could use a RGB curve node, but um, this time I uh, wanted to use a float curve node, but I think it's uh, pretty the same. 
uh, don't be confused uh, we will need a position node and a combine x y z node and that all comes together in a vector mass node and now we are going to connect our nodes and type in the right parameters so we connect a factor node with the vector input and the important thing is we have to set this to 2d to um, get to the right output scale we can set to 0 0.003 that means really really large noise texture because we have really large area we have to fill detail we want much detail in our icebergs roughness we can leave at 0 0.5 and distortion we can leave at zero now the rony texture we set to 3d smooth f1 manhattan scale to 2.1 smoothness and randomness we can leave like they appear now connect the color with the factor input and the color with the value the factor here um, is important for the height of our iceberg so we can type in six we can change that later on and make some experiments and now the value goes into the z channel because of we only want to raise up the z channel and not the x and the y channel and the z channel is the height and now connect the position into the upper input and the combine xyz into the lower input and now we can connect this into the offset input of our z position node and as we can see we still see nothing that's why that's because we have to change some parameters here first of all we have to increase the color ramp a little bit something like that i will type in the exact values like i did in my uh, notes so 6.7 and we have to make, make the color ramp, the float curve, I mean, sorry, pretty flat and bring up these parameters like that. And now that we can see more, we have to bring in uh, another vector node. Just copy that. And there we need a multiply just plug it between the set position node and your add node and type in here maybe 30. That brings us some pretty cool icebergs but as when as we look to uh, some some reference images it looks more at the moment it's like some 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 rocky mountains area uh, for example or something else it does not look like icebergs and that's because uh, icebergs have that typical flat uh, flat area on the top so something like that and less something like uh, this one here and how do we get that um we plug in another map range node and the map range node will make um, will, will cut off the mountains at a certain height and will give us the typical look of a iceberg so we will need a map range node and we will set the map range to vector this will be set to smoother step and we connect the vector of our multiply with the vector of our map range and that vector goes again in our offset 
And as you can see, we got some cut off mountains. And now we only have to change some parameters uh, in our map range. Type in three, three, three. I think I used that, but you can play with your own values. Uh, but uh, these parameters uh, fitted uh, for me. And to max 10, 10. And now the important factor 15. And this will be later on the control of our icebergs. I think we can leave that value now. No, we can't. It's also some control, some height control. So you, with the first one, you control uh, how to explain the the mid height of our icebergs. As you can see, when you when we lower that, we get some 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 spikes in it. And as we set it near to 10, we type in 10 and 10, it should be all perfectly flat at the top, cut off. And as we decrease the first number, we get some spikes in it. So you can decide what looks best for you. Uh, I will leave it at uh, maybe 9 and the other one at 15 maybe, that looks pretty much like an iceberg, I think. And now we can control our icebergs if it looks cool, if we give it some material. Uh, I've already prepared the material. I call it the price iceberg. And let's see what it does and I think it already looks pretty cool. Um, let's have a quick look to our material. Um, I've prepared um, a temporal, temporary uh, material plane because I cannot drag and drop the the material on my geometry nodes because everything uh, in, in geometry nodes, also the, um, the the ocean and so on, will have that material. So I created that temporary material plane, which I put far below uh, under my iceberg somewhere, I don't know. So let's have a quick look at the material. Um, I've also made some experience with the material. Uh, it's nothing um, that I came up in my head and that's, so it, it has to be exactly like that way. So um, I have a texture coordinate um, node with uh, object output mapping and I increased the Y scale um, because I wanted to have some some layered uh, ice because I think that's typical for um, for icebergs because snow is falling and then it gets frozen snow is falling and then it, it gets frozen and um, if you if you look in detail uh, you can see later on if we add some more details. That's uh, what I tried to explain uh, at the beginning with the higher resolution. You can see some some uh, layered uh, some yes some Y layers in there. That's typical for these icebergs. And then um, the mapping goes out into a Voroni texture. I just bring that on the whole screen so you can copy that. So a Veroni texture with some uh, very high, um, low scale, hi high numbers means that they are very small scaled, um, a noise texture, another noise texture, and I combined the Veroni texture with a noise texture, and that one goes into the color ramp because the, the ice has some, the typical ice surface is with some Metallic, no, I, it, it, it looks like metallic because it has, has a very strong reflection, the ice crystals. And of course, uh, I gave it some, some bump um, to, to add some additional noise. Um, not only the noise we create with our uh, grid, but also um, we have some noise with our bump that gives it uh, some additional um, more natural looking noise uh, more natural looking noise 
you can copy that and of course you can add your own ice shader so back to our geometry nodes let's make a group around our uh, iceberg shape i will call that iceberg base shape now you can control the shape of your icebergs uh, sorry um, like that the shape of your icebergs um, with, with several parameters for example you can make some variations in the scale you can give it some little distortion like that you can also change the second noise texture something like that that's a very large iceberg um, i think that's a very sensitive parameter uh, but you know what i mean you can also change the randomness you can play with the color ramp and the color ramp uh, defines the ratio between water and icebergs so if you in if you turn the white uh, the white point to the right the more icebergs you get and if you turn it to the left you get more and more water and some interesting looking shape like this and of course you can control the height with that parameter down low here and the other one in the multiplier vector now it's time to add some distortion on the flat surface um, or on the top of our icebergs because i think it looks a little bit too flat uh, i think no iceberg has such a flat surface and to create that we just plug in another z position node because we just um, make some variations after that whole noise displacement and plug in another that position node and now we add another noise texture we add another float curve we add another set position node no sorry another position node we will need another combine x y z and a vector mass set to add now again uh, to connect these we will plug the factor into our value and again we will need a pretty low scale to 0 0.0.1 0 .1. the detail again we want high because we want much details um, it looks more natural and uh, roughness and distortion we can leave as they appear to get some some roughness some some random shape into our um, iceberg surface you can distort that curve maybe something like that now plug in the value into the set channel position into upper vector and that vector into the lower one and now we can sorry and now we can plug that into the position node of our second z position so we still see nothing because we forgot to change one parameter and that is the factor of our float curve node and the vector uh, the vector uh, sorry the factor <laughs> uh, also defines the height of our distortion and when we type in for example 10 you can see that only our 
or flat planes get influenced by that height factor and we immediately get some pretty realistic looking icebergs. So now it's time to create the ocean. Hit Control J and we name that ooh, distortion on top. I don't know. Call it like yeah, however you want to. And now it's time to create the water. The water is again pretty easy. We need another grid and. The grid has exactly the same size as our iceberg mesh. We will need a set position node. We will need a set shade smooth. I'm not uh, really sure if you don't if you need that because we uh, only give the water some uh, bump noise. That's, that means I don't think we need to, that, that position node, but um, why not? And of course we need some material. Set material. And now it all comes together in a join geometry node. And there we already have some water. Now you can control the uh, height of your water level with the Z channel of your Z position. Uh, so if I type in six, you know, we have a six meter high water level. And I also prepared some water, I uh, called it ocean. And also we have a look at our ocean material. It's a texture coordinate node, that object with mapping, a noise texture with a pretty low scale. As we increase our scale, we get some more um, distorted water, like that. Maybe that looks even more realistic because uh, that looks more like real world measurement. You have to think that a man would be human would be only about that size maybe so maybe that water looks even more realistic than the 0 0.3 but that's totally up to you that goes into a bump node and the bump node goes into normal transmission set to one ior to zero uh, to 1.333 uh, roughness to zero and i gave it some uh, some bluish color and I've also created um, some principled volume shader to give it some, some depth uh, and some volume absorption. And I've also gave it some color. That density is about 0 0.2 and the anisotropy, what a terrible word, is to one. Now back to our geometry nodes. The only thing, uh, thing that we need uh, um, still is our ice chunks. And therefore, we I created some ice chunks. It's some pretty, some really simple, um, some cubes. And I've just changed the shape like that. And I just changed the shape. And I gave it some uh, set depth. Um, and I. I uh, put the midpoint um, maybe in the upper third or in the upper, upper yes, upper third maybe. So that that part will look uh, out of the water and the lower part is inside the water. So we have some depth absorption and we can see um, a little bit of our ice rocks in the water. And I've created um, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. Uh, the more you create, the more realistic it looks because there is no repetition. But of course, that's also totally up to you. Um, back to our scene. 
Now we bring in our ice chunks. And move that a little bit up. And now we need a distribute points on face node. Connect the Z position node with our new node. Of course, we will need a instance on points node. Connect points with points and that one with the join geometry. And now we drag and drop our whole ice chunks collection into our scene. Don't forget to activate separate children, reset children, and um, in the instance on points node, activate pick instances, otherwise the collection node does not work. And now plug in the geometry into our instance. And immediately we got uh, many, many uh, ice chunks. I will set this to maybe one. At the moment they are too big. Uh, we can't see the water anymore. That's because the ice chunks uh, are scaled too big and they have no random scale. Um, to change that, we will create a random, sorry, random value node. The smallest uh, ice chunk should be 1.0 and the biggest one, well, maybe 0 0.5 and we plug that into our scale. Now that looks that looks good. And of course, we want them now some random rotation. Again, we need a random value node, and this time we set it to vector and we set rotation on the x, x, and y channel to the zero, and on the z channel. We give it rotation about 20, so that should be enough. And now everything is rotated pretty randomly, but still it looks too uniform. And to create uh, some, some noise within uh, the randomness, we will add a delete geometry node, because we are now going to delete some of these ice chunks. And we are going to plug in the delete geometry node right in between our z position node and the distribution points on faces node. It deletes everything immediately. And to change that, we need a noise texture and a color ramp. And we plug in the factor into the factor input and color into selection. And as we can see, the color ramp is still not working because we forgot, or I forgot to increase the, to set up, to increase the resolution of our water grid. Um, the texture node uh, does not, texture noise does not uh, work on a very uh, small resolution grid, of course. We have to get, give it some big resolution, something like that. And now we see that we have control about the density or not more the distribution of our ice chunks. Um, we can give it a pretty low So as you can see now we have a pretty um, low um, scaled noise texture and as you can see we have some pretty cool looking uh, gaps in our eyes that looks more realistic than the first version. You can now play with the distortion, uh, with the scale of your um, noise texture and of course with, with the color ramp. That's some additional density control. And that should be at zero. 
that's all. Uh, you have now some pretty cool um, polar region scene with some uh, ice chunks in the water. And if you want to now, if you now want to have uh, all the controls in, inside your modifier panel, just connect everything with the empty inputs. And as you can see, it immediately appears on the right side. So I hope you enjoyed and the tutorial and learned something. Uh, hope I see you at the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.